All right, great. Okay, so we see here that we have, all right, we're going to load the data. We've set the number of folds K. We're not going to use five anywhere, all right? And we've randomly assigned uh, each of the rows in training to a particular value of fold. So why don't we do a view train, all right? First of all, wow, that's a lot of variables. Yeah, disgusting. All right. So let's now set up uh, the elements. So the first thing we're going to do is CP values grid. So I'm going to consider a sequence from 0 to, I don't know, let's say 0.5. But you know what? We can define the increments like this, right, in steps of 0.01. But hey, check out what I'm going to do instead. Length equals 101. Watch what happens there. What it does then is it sets up 101 equally spaced thing. So if I want to change the search grid value, folks, what's the one value that I need to change? 0.5. So I'll start at 0.5 like that. Next, RMSE, or let's just say error, estimates rep zero times equals oh I'm not gonna do 101 watch what I'm gonna write here length CP values grid does everybody see the difference there so if I want to say hey I don't want to just search 101 values I want to search 1001 values I just needed to set it once. Now, I'm not going to expect this for your problem sets, but going forward, you see how if I do things this way, I only need to change the minimal number of values. Does that make sense? Let's just sanity check those. And again, sanity checks are generally not good for your sanity. Ah, great. Those are where we are. we're going to save the error estimate for each of the CP values. All right. So now... Let's do the following. For i in 1 through k. All right. We've got this loop business here. All right. But you know what? I don't like programming in a loop like this because it's a layer of abstraction. Watch what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to set i to the first value. And I'll worry about the for loop later. Does everybody see that? So I'm not going to worry about getting the for loop to work perfectly. I'm going to set i like that. All right. So we'll call this train cv is equal to train filter fold not equal to i. And test cv is equal to train whoops, filter fold equal to i. So I'm going to run that. Again, folks, don't focus so much on the solution, but focus on the process. Now, notice, folks, I'm only worrying about the inner loop, the cross-validation first. I'm going to get that to work first. But now, what do I need? I need to save the RMSC estimate or the error estimate for each fold. So watch what I'm going to do here. Error estimate for uh, per fold rep zero K ah so for each of the folds oh wait a minute no I need to put this outside there we go because for each of the five folds I'm going to save the error estimate what's the error per fold just five slots any questions okay so I'm gonna run this thing in here again we set I equal to one so let's see if this works all right Train CV, whoops, not train VS, but train CV. What's the size of it? 1,168, okay. Let's see, test CV. What's the size of it? 292, okay. That's about four to one. That's about the right size of the test versus the train. Any questions so far? All right, now, woof, all right. Ah, where did I set what K is? I set it up way up here. Yeah. And again, I will share this. What I'm writing right now is what I'm going to send you folks. 
Okay, next. Oof, all right, what do I need to do now? I need to train the model on those variables. So let me go and get that from here. Let me borrow, uh, let's see, where's, where's that burner account? PS4, Team 19. All right, we'll go here. Where was it? I'm going to copy and paste that code. Okay, here we go. So I'll say uh, trained model is equal to our part like that. Data equal to, oh, wait a minute. I never remember how do you set the CP values. So I'll do data train. I'll just go to coding and I'll just copy it from somewhere. Where was it? Uh, I'm copying it, copying it, copying it. Looking, looking, looking. Oh, here we go. I'll just copy this. All right, great. So I'll p copy that. I'll paste it down here. I'll put the same variables here. Okay. Here. The data is equal to, uh, what is it? Train CV. All right. I'll re-indent this. Ah, okay, I'll highlight this. Press Command I to get some nice indentation. Okay, you know what? Don't worry about doing all the CVs. I'm just gonna get it work for point two. Get it working. Make sure your, your cross-validation works. Let's add a comment. Fit model. Great. Next up, get predictions. All right, I never remember how to do these things. So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna copy and paste it from somewhere else. All right, where is that? Yeah. Not class, no, it has to be a numeric one. Here we go. Predict, there we go, I'm gonna copy that. All right, I'm gonna run this. Oh, dang. <laughs> so it's not species, it's what? Sale price. Wait, is it sale price? Paired programming right there, folks. Great. Train model. Next. Get predictions. I'll copy that in here. Paste that down here. Uh, what is it? Test CV. What's that? 292. Is that... The dimension of the test sets, dimension, what is it, test CV? Yes. Great. The length of our predictions matches the number of rows in the test set. Next, get error. So, RMSLE for fold is equal to, and we're going to use the RMSLE function from the metrics package. So actual is the truth. What is it? It's test CV dollar sign sale price. That's the actual. And then the predicted is equal to, we'll call this Y hat. All right, Y hat. I'll paste that over here. Let's run that. Okay, that looks reasonable. I just got a CV of 0.34. But remember folks, that we want to save this for each fold. So I'm going to take this vector here. Remember, that's, that's that vector of length five. We want to put 0.34 in here. So I'm gonna copy that down here, paste this down here, and I. Okay, great. Oh, fingers crossed. Is this going to work? Probably not. All right, I'm going to highlight all that. Whoops. All right, highlight all that. Oh, no error message. Error estimate per fold. Hey, not too shabby. Okay, looks like we're almost done the inner loop. But what is the error estimate now? The error estimate is equal to what mean of those five values. The average error for CP equal to 
is 0.3345. Is it right? I don't know. It doesn't look wrong. All right. Any questions? Yes, so there's many ways you can do it, uh, but again, uh, what I did was, okay, first thing is I take the original training set, I randomly assign the folds by first randomly reshuffling the rows. That's what this does. Sample frac size one just says resample 100% of the rows at random without replacement. So what it does is that it really, it just, well, why don't I run it a few times here? If I run it, Ah. See, you have like 918256. If I run it again, you get a different set of rows. It just it shuffles the rows. Then what I do is, okay, I repeat the values 1 through K. How many times? Whatever number of rows there are. That's what this N function does. The N function returns the number of rows in your data set. So just repeat 1 through K so that you end up with 1 through k. For example, why don't I do this? I'll copy and paste this down here. Let's do n equals, I don't know, 76. It's just going to repeat 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so that you end up with 76 of them. And then what do I do? Yeah, I just do a little sorting so that they're bunched up by folds. Now, there's, this is not the only way to do it. This is one way to do it. Question? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I added it. Yes. Okay. So what I could have done is I could have taken this thing and copied it here, but then that line of code would get really long and hard to read. So I put it in a new vector by itself, and then I pasted it there. Okay. Questions? All right. Now, if I were doing this assignment, what would I do? Git commit push. Lock it in. Because, hey, you might try something else and be like, whoa, this thing doesn't work. You need to rewind the tape and go back to it. So I'm not going to git commit push it, but this is a good idea where you would git commit push it. Git commit done inner loop. Boom. All right. Now that we have that part working, now we got to worry about the outer loop. We got to do this not just for CP equals zero. Uh, sorry, point two, but we got to test out every point two. So we're going to need another for loop for this. So I'm going to now set j equal to, I don't know, let's just say five. All right. Oh, no, why don't I do this? I'll do for j in one through length. CP values grid. Okay, I'll open the brackets and I'll close the brackets. Huge tip, folks. This is a great tip, even for any kind of programming, while white spaces. Indenting really helps read code, make code easy to read. So, watch what I'm going to do. Again, you can watch all this later on the video. I'm going to highlight all that stuff, and on a Mac, you press Command I on a Windows computer, you press Control I. All right, everybody stare at the screen with eyes wide open. Three, two, one, boom. Did everybody see that? Wow, okay, now it really makes it obvious this is part of the inner loop. And in fact, if I don't even want to look at the inner loop, I can click on this arrow right here. Watch this. So I'm like, hey, I don't want to. I don't want to worry about that stuff. I just want to worry on the stuff outside of it. So if you click on that arrow there, it either folds it or doesn't fold it. Okay, I understand I'm going quickly, but again, that is the reason why I'm doing the screencast. Okay, so any questions? Now let's make things easy. Let's call this current CP value. It's going to be equal to CP values grid J. So let's set J equal to 1, for example. What is the first CP value grid? <laughs> Good old 0. I'm going to save it here. 
And then I'm going to take that value and replace 0.2 with it. So now it's going to run it dynamically. You can change which CP value you're running it for. All right. Let's run this and see how it looks. I'm going to highlight that. What do we have? Error estimate 0.212. All right. But now we got to save all these values individually. So I'm going to replace error estimate with actually error estimates. Wait, what am I doing? I can just put an S there. S J equals J. All right. Does this work? Probably not, but let's see. I'm going to highlight all that. All right. Da, 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 da. Highlight that. Oh, taking a little while. Oh, okay. No error message. Error estimates. Oh, okay. Doesn't look wrong. All right. Now, let's make a data frame out of that using the tip I gave over Slack. So what do we say? We'll call this CP value equals to, what is it? It is uh, CP values grid, comma, error estimate equal to error estimates. This is starting to get confusing with the file names. And it's Friday. This is not good practice. Let's just call it blah. All right, ggplot blah aes x equal to cp value y equal to error estimate. Let's put a g on point and let's put some labels x equals to a uh, uh, complexity parameter and y equals to uh, what is it? Uh, Estimate of RMSLE. All right. How does that look? Okay. Look at that. Pop quiz, everybody. Is the minimum value greater than 0.1? No. Take it to the bank. Yes, there's a little wiggle. But you know what? It is not greater than 0.1. So, back to the microphone. If it's not greater than 0.1, don't bother searching behind beyond 0.1. Let's focus in. Point oh five. That's what I mean by refining your search grid. We're going to look for values that are more in a, in a narrower range. We're going to focus in over here. So let's do that. Point. Oh, look at that. I changed one number. Now, folks, I'm not expecting you to do this. I mean, I've been doing this for years. That's how I know to do this. But there's a lesson here about coding in a way where you only need to change the minimal number of values. Let's do that. Let's take a look, see how it looks. Oh, okay. It's a little better, right? Now, is it greater than 0 0.005? No. All right. 0 0.005. Let's run it. Oh, snap. Look at that. Everybody see that minimum sort of pop out? If you look at a search grid that's too coarse, you're not going to be able to identify that minima. Because the search grid we had, I think it was zero, then I think the, the, the next value it considered was like 0.01. It wasn't even in there. Let's refine it one last time. I think a nice sort of bound will be 0.0015. Yeah. And in fact, point. Oh, wait, let's, let me get the zeros right. 0 0.0015 and oh snap, watch this. Let's dial it up. 500 values. 
Okay, well, maybe 500 was a little exaggerated because now we're running into runtime issues, but it'll get done eventually. All right, let's see. This is where you get up, go to the bathroom, stretch, breathe, get some tea. All right. Oh, there we go. Okay, so at this point I'm going to stop, but it looks like the optimal complexity parameter, oh geez, what is that? That looks like it is 0. 0.000, maybe about 2. All right, any questions? Now, one great question, and I'll end here because uh, I've been talking for a little bit. Why do we have these flat spots? Why is the thing flat? Meaning, for different CP values, why do we get the same RMSLE? Because they're close enough that the tree ends up being the same. Everybody hear that? They're close enough where the tree ends up being the same. So let's go back to, what was it? Uh, Cart, the Shiny app. Let's run that. Okay, let me pop this out. Check it out, folks. 0.01, you get this tree, right? Let's bump the CP parameter just a little bit to the right. 0.016, the tree didn't change. So if the tree didn't change, your predictions didn't change. All right, any last questions?